Our society has grown too terrified of death. Just a century ago, we used to recognize and accept that one day we will die, and so will our loved ones. But today, this awareness has diminished. In truth, it has reversed. We avoid thinking about death and its implications. We perceive it as a dreadful and daunting thought. Perhaps one of the most forgotten and least practiced stoic exercises is memento mori. When translated from Latin into English, it is referred to as remember that you will die, or remember that you must die. Not long ago, this was a daily reminder across all social divisions of society, the rich, the powerful, the average, and the poor. In fact, it initially originated through a slave and a general, as we will soon discover. A common misunderstanding of this concept is that it was used strictly in Stoicism, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Though heavily attached, spoken, and thought through the philosophy of Stoicism, it was accepted on a high level in ancient Egypt, Rome, art, and religions. Today, it's not acknowledged at any level. This growing tendency in our culture to ignore the potential presence of death has led many to fall into the illusion that we can stay young forever and never die. When, in reality, as Stoicism describes it, death is inevitable, a simple event bound to happen by the force of nature. We often misinterpret contemplating death as a pessimistic thought, but as we will learn, that's not completely accurate. Embracing death allows us to live purposefully, virtuously, and meaningfully. Likewise, disregarding this inevitable episode in our lives puts us in a losing wager against time. We chase goals that aren't ours, live unintentionally, and seek possessions that won't bring true satisfaction. However, we have yet to explore the benefits of recognizing death along with the concept of memento mori. So, let's uncover these ideas at a deeper level. To fully grasp the concept of memento mori, we must observe the context in which it was born. According to the Galileo Galilei Institute, the saying memento mori originated from ancient Rome, a society of which had developed a special sensitivity towards life and death. Upon returning to the city after a great victory over his enemies on the battlefield, a general, dressed in a red or purple toga with his face painted red to symbolize his likeness to the god Jupiter, rode in a golden chariot drawn by four horses. Cruising through the city, the general would receive immense praise, applause, and admiration from the citizens of Rome. However, through this gratitude, he would inevitably develop a delusion of pure omnipotence, a feeling of complete superiority of power. This, along with pride and arrogance, would turn the general into a delusional figure, living in a false reality. And so, in hopes of humbling or perhaps saving the general, a slave holding a golden crown above his head would remind him of his natural human state, frequently whispering, Respais poste, ominum te memento, or in English, look behind, remember that you are a man. The slave's whispers were meant to suppress the general's ego, reminding him that despite his status or glory, he was still as mortal and subject to death as all humans. From an afterlife or grand perspective, he was exactly the same as everyone else. In other words, the life we live won't change the fact that we will die. Anyone, even the victorious general who felt at the top of the world, now lies dead and nearly forgotten. Thus, don't look down on death, but welcome it. It too is one of the things required by nature, like youth and old age, like growth and maturity, like a new set of teeth, a beard, the first gray hair, like sex and pregnancy and childbirth. This is how a thoughtful person should await death. Not with indifference, not with impatience, not with disdain but simply viewing it as one of the things that happens to us. Welcoming death became a tradition in other periods of history too. According to Montaigne, in ancient Egypt, during the hay of a banquet, the Egyptians would bring in a dead corpse, held up by a man saying, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you shall be like this. Death was a constant reminder because really, it may be true. Even for you, me, and our families, today might be the last day we get to live, and that's normal and okay. If it happens, it was meant to. That's fate in Stoicism. Everything that occurs to us is directed by the force of nature, even death itself. And so we shall spend no time fearing or grieving about it. During the Renaissance, dance macabre became a common theme both culturally and artistically. When translated into English, it is known as the Dance of Death. At the time, the Hundred Years' War, Great Famine, Black Death Plague, and as a result, low life expectancies of which were around 35 to 40 years old led to a traumatizing realization. That was that death could occur at any time, decimating both the old and the young, 
the rich and the poor. Often depicted in paintings and church rituals, the Dance of Death would quickly become notorious all over Europe. Dance Macabre illustrates a dance that gathers the living and the dead together, regardless of social status. Containing skeletons leading people from all walks of life to their graves, it symbolized that everyone is equal in the face of death. No matter if one was a king or a peasant, they too would eventually die. And so too, in the 17th century, Trappist friars would often repeat the phrase memento mori, and even dig up their own graves each day to remind themselves of death and its possibility. Similarly, the Buddhists of Tibet have a practice called Lojong. In this practice, there are four main thoughts. All things made from other things are impermanent, the human body is a thing made from other things, therefore the death of the body is certain, the time of death is uncertain and beyond our control. Much like Stoicism, it reminds us that death is certain, just not when it will occur. The culture of the samurai had a similar way of acknowledging death. The way of the samurai is, morning after morning, the practice of death. Considering whether it will be here or be there, imagining the most sightly way of dying and putting one's mind firmly in death. Although this may be a most difficult thing, if one will do it, it can be done. There is nothing that one should suppose cannot be done. Arguably quite extreme, the point remained the same. We should remind ourselves that death will happen. We shouldn't worry about it, but we should consider it. Michel de Montaigne, one of the most significant philosophers of the French Renaissance, heavily influenced by Stoicism, said, Let us deprive death of a strangeness. Let us frequent it. Let us get used to it. Let us have nothing more often in mind than death. At every instant, let us invoke it in our imagination under all its aspects. To practice death is to practice freedom. A man who has learned how to die has unlearned how to be a slave. At this point, you understand the extent to which the practice of memento mori, or reminding ourselves of death, was practiced. But how does it become beneficial? Why consider it if we don't want to die? Can't we just forget about its possibility and not trouble ourselves with such a negative thought? You could leave life right now, let that determine what you do and say and think. The reason to think about death is simple, it helps us live with urgency. Imagining that tomorrow is your last day, how would you spend it? In a way, this reminder assists us with discovering the important aspects of our lives and what to value within it. By reminding ourselves of death, we can find pleasure, enjoyment and gratitude in the things we would otherwise find boring, mundane or normal. We stop procrastinating and chase goals that bring true fulfillment. Through this, we're never short of time. As Seneca said, Let us prepare our minds as if we would come to the very end of life. Let us postpone nothing. Let us balance life's books each day. The one who puts the finishing touches on their life each day is never short of time. Moreover, reminding ourselves of death allows us to grieve less when it actually happens. Greek Stoic philosopher Epictetus believed that when kissing your father, child, friend or any family member, we should tell ourselves that they are, after all, human, since eventually they too will be gone. However, though it seems as the opposite, this actually encourages us to love them even more, appreciate every moment and find gratitude in spending time with them. We're able to live in the present and find joy during it. These are the benefits of reminding ourselves of death, whether through memento mori, imagining it, drawing it or writing about it, the idea sticks. Today, this no longer exists. We neglect pondering about it and as a result, live meaninglessly. We procrastinate on important tasks and take loved ones for granted. Later, when death arrives, we grieve and struggle to overcome it. It's a paradox. By embracing and welcoming death, we aren't upset by such incidents. The same way forgetting its existence, we become haunted by it. This is why memento mori was an important practice of stoicism, though unfortunately not anymore. As always, thank you for watching.